everybody, this is Bill Vernon, your Keller Williams agent for the Central Texas area and the rainmaker on the I-35 uh, group and Keller Williams Lone Star. And we have our favorite person on the whole planet, Samantha Jackson. She's on, uh, uh, or I should say my favorite person on the whole planet on Wednesdays. Here, she's our guest on Wednesdays. How are you doing, Samantha? Good to see you. Doing good, actually. Um, it's you know, we're, we're starting to see a brighter future, aren't we? Yes. Well, you know, uh, thanks for saying that. I kind of, we usually talk about technical lending questions uh, on these calls. Today, um, we're going to kind of take a departure from that and, and kind of talk about, hey, the sky isn't falling. Um, what, do, what do you think about that? And, and let me preference, I'm going to just cut you off after I ask you a question. You know me, Samantha. Samantha has been uh, through this more than once, this kind of cray cray that um, we are in. Um, and so I just, I just want you to come to people and, and talk about your past experience and how that relates to the current market. It's, you know, it's not unlike how things started back in like 06, 07, where everything was super crazy, rates were low, everybody's buying, there's no end to this market. Um, you know, the difference is I think now we have the safeguards in place to prevent that housing crash. Um, even though interest rates are going up, they're not, they're, they're getting back to what we would consider normal levels. We've had super low interest rates for so long that this current generation of home buyers isn't accustomed to a rate above five. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you on that. And, and it's kind of interesting. Everybody wanted us to go back to normal. And now we're going to normal. And people are not very happy with normal for some reason. You know, I keep hearing the rates are so high. They're not so high. They're back to sustainable levels. At, at 2.5%, that's not a sustainable level. I mean, we're, we're basically lending money for free. True. And... You know, and I want to. I want people to realize, as a real estate investor, money, the cost of money, is something that is important to me as well as to a regular home walk owner. But it's a little different. What do you What do you think about that? I think How do you're right. Look I mean, as a as a homeowner, you're going to have to look at it as you know, am I going to? You're going to pay. 100% interest if you're renting. So to people who are saying, I'm going to wait until rates go back down, I think you're going to be waiting a while. And I think you're going to miss out on that appreciation that you would get of the property that you buy now. Because let's face it, we're not accustomed to that 20% appreciation here. Our market doesn't, doesn't have that 20% appreciation for various reasons, not because our economy is soft here in Central Texas, but just because we have a steady growth, but when everybody else starts to, if they start to downturn, we don't downturn with them. We typically ride the plane. So I think, you know, you have to look at it that way too. I will give up 40% appreciation in a year to when everybody else is doing negative 20 so that we can stay at zero or two or three. Uh, you know, and back to the, the term we, we kind of said normal going back to the normal, uh, does that mean uh, that people can sell their house and people can buy their houses? I mean, that, that, does that stop or does that, you know, Absolutely does that not, but it's going to make it more of an even playing field. Um, for the last two years, sellers have been on the winning end of everything and buyers have kind of been on the, the I won't say losing end because they're still getting their house, but it's not an equal transaction um, it, it's hard to find an equal transaction over the last couple of years, hasn't it? Well, I, I, I see what you're saying to me. Um, now, again, I kind of look at it as um, it is what it is. Uh -huh. I need to buy a house, et cetera. Um, again, have do, uh, been doing this business for over uh, yeah. a decade and change. What I notice is something that you're talking about is just, well, first off, there's houses to see. You know, before you kind of went, I would, as a buyer's agent, we would say, what do, um, 
what does your dream house look at look like well we stopped saying that because you know what it is there you see that house over there it somewhat has what you want and we better make an offer on it right now uh, so there wasn't a, you know that that part of it is out um what what do you what were you seeing on your end versus in previous years uh, bc before covid I mean, before that, we saw that sellers were sometimes paying closing costs. Um, buyers were offering list price. I mean, in our market for many years, houses have sold very close to list price, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, during COVID, it, it wasn't that way. No, it, it, the seller, you know, back to it, you know, there was negotiations, BC, before COVID, um, where you might say, Oh, I'm going to ask for the fridge, you know, stuff like that. Um, ask them to power wash the, uh, the backside out, or, you know, you'd have those kind of conversations. Now it was like, uh, don't ask, you know, buyers don't ask if you get the fridge, that's because uh, they're, they're wanting to buy a new fridge and you got lucky. Um, and, and so, you know, that, that portion uh, has disappeared and potentially is coming back um, again. Um, we uh, were, I was at a meeting this week and it was interesting talking to us in the, the, these were Austin agents, I hang out with a lot of Austin area agents and um, we're still doing multiples here, there, they got houses sitting on the market now. Well, we've started to see price reductions. Um, I don't know about you, but I, I scroll through social media and I see price reduced. And we had a meeting last week where we talked about that that's, that's probably not the best thing for the market. Um, there are better ways to, you know, adjust that needle to make the house more attractive, but we're not, we're not really losing value. Some of those prices, some of those houses were probably overlisted. And, but, you know, you used a term that I think really shows it, it, it's really the hallmark of a stable market and that's negotiation. When you have room for negotiation and you have the ability to negotiate, that's indicating a stable market in, in my eyes. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Now, you know, something I also want to kind of put out there um, is what is real estate like in your in your eyes as a professional that does this day to day? Is it like us going to get tennis shoes when I walk into Academy? Um, I know I'm going to walk out with a pair of tennis shoes um, or maybe a better analogy would be is when I walk into Mickey D's, I go, I want a number one super size it. Um, and uh, you, you, you get your sandwich. And if I go up there and go, I want a number one, I want it super size, it, I get the same sandwich and it happens pretty quick. And, and um, uh, you don't order it your way, but you, get, you, get, you know what you're getting. What is real estate like in this current uh, climate? I'm not, I'm not sure I followed the analogy there. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I, I guess what I'm trying to get at is, hey, this is real estate. And, you know, you and I live this day in and day out, um, but the average civilian, as I call them, you know, because we're in a military town, I, I, I use military jar jargon, they don't know the life. And when they're doing in the middle of a transaction, their expectations are they walk in and they order, a, a, you know, their Mickey D's and it gets thrown in front of them pretty dang quick. And they, but real estate's a different kind of story. Well, everything in real estate is different. Every client is different. Every family is different. Every house is different. Every transaction is different. You can take two houses in two separate neighborhoods and the houses are identical down to the brand of nails they used and they're going to be valued different depending on their location. So, um, you know, I hear people say, well, I had to make more than one offer. I had to make two offers and they didn't accept my offer. You know, that's, that's part of it at this point. It's, it's, really you've got to have flexibility and understanding right so your ex what you're saying is their expectations need to uh be a little bit more um well they need to rely on their team right you know i was just going to say that they need to rely on the professionals um you've been doing this i've been doing this your team's been doing this my team's been doing this this is this is what we do this is what we do day in and day out and we're, we're following the terms of the market. We're following the ebbs and flows and trying to stay ahead of it so that we can advise our clients correctly. 
Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny you just said the, what you said, your team, my team has this experience. What's interesting in that is, for instance, I know you have a new person on your team, and, mm-hmm. but that new person came in with a, a couple of years experience, maybe even three or four years. I'm trying to remember, man, it's two, yeah. three years, right? And, and so even your new person um, has been doing her job uh, before COVID um, and during COVID. And, and the same on my, my team, um, a lot of the uh, people have been on here at least 18 months. The youngest person has been here for, um, for 18 months, which during this uh, time period is still a forever because um, things got so compressed. Oh, yeah. Uh, they, they've seen a lot, of, a lot of stuff going on. So, uh, yeah, what, what does team look like to you? you know, as far as like what we're doing with the with clients. clients. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the team looks like a group of people that can communicate with each other and they know how to get from point A to point B. And um, I've used this analogy for years. Um, buying a home is like taking a trip on an airplane. You've got your pilot, your co-pilot, that's your realtor and your lender. But you've got a whole lot of people that work on this plane too, that are, that you can't even see. Yeah. You know, we've got processors, transaction coordinators, um, I mean, there's, there's a whole lot yeah. of people that work on this team together and we all do everything we can to make sure it's the smoothest flight possible. Um, you know, some of the people you see are going to be your, your flight crew. Um, they're, they're responsible for your safety and your comfort. Um, but we've also got baggage handlers and mechanics and all those other people that are working on the plane. Our goal is to have a smooth takeoff and a smooth landing with as little turbulence in between. That is what a team looks like to me. Uh, right. Um, I, I was getting a couple of Dave Ramsey books for somebody. And there was a quote in there. It's really cool. Business is fun until you add the people. Um, now, that isn't as negative as it sounds for us, other than we all got to realize that, that that's what's involved in this. There's a lot of people involved in it. And, and so we got to be focused on that. It, and back to the team, it's not just having the team, it's having a winning team. Um, I know that uh, you close a lot of deals and do a lot of business, uh, which tells me um, that you're very successful at what you do. Um, you want to sp- speak on that a little about, about your experiences and stuff, your your success. And, and I know that's kind of hard for you, but can you, can you kind of do that? I see the like deer in the headlights look. I, I don't, I don't like to do that. Yeah, you're, um, a, you're a humble person, which is another reason why you're kind of on my team is I don't want egos. I, I get in a, a you sh- you're looking at the, the, the ego here and Samantha, Samantha's smiling. She's like, yeah, that's so true. Bill, Bill has enough ego for, for the, the team. Um, but in all seriousness, you are a humble person, hence why I like you on the team. There, your ego's on the shelf. But I really want people to know you at, right now during this time when there's a lot of, oh, the world's coming to an end. We can watch YouTube after YouTube, and pretty soon, because they're, they're so positive, the media is going to really start ramming this, uh, this point down at everybody's throat. Um, but I want people to know when we're going over the barrel um, of the Ni- uh, Niagara Falls that they have you on their team. Can, can you talk a little about, about that? I mean, I'm a, I'm a lender. I've been here for a long time. Um, I am, I think, one of the top 10 VA lenders at guaranteed rate. Um, I made the top 1% of originators in the United States. Um, I make our company President's Club. Um, but that's all due to, you know, the people that work around me and the people I work with. Um, I, I can't take credit for that because it's not, it's not just me, but, um, I've been doing this 22 years now and, um, you know, the things that make me successful are, uh, understanding guidelines and being able to, um, help people meet those guidelines, even if it looks like maybe on the surface, they might not, um, but, Also, it's about learning to structure people's loans. So in in my eyes, it's not just about somebody getting a loan for a home. It's about helping them build that financial strategy to meet their goals. 
And there's more than one way to do that. Um, you know, people come to me and they're like, well, I'm happy to do a conventional loan with 20% down. Well, why aren't you using your VA loan? Oh, uh, because somebody told me it's not as good of a loan. Okay, well, that's not true. Let's look at your situation and see if it is true. Um, so it's all about, uh, just like you, you go to somebody's house and they're talking about selling their house and you may end up not listing their house because it's not the right thing for them to do. It's, it's not just about making a commission at the end of the day. It's knowing that I've done right by that family, knowing that you've done right by that family and um, being there for them when they are ready. Mm -hmm. So Samantha, as we wrap this up, I just, uh, I just want to reiterate uh, to people that, um, you know, Samantha and Bill don't control the future. Uh, we don't have crystal balls. However, we know how to deal with the market as the market is right this second, right this moment. I mean, Bill, um, I would love to say, I, I mean, just, just as an aside, I don't have the doom and gloom outlook that a lot of people do. And I don't think you do either. We yeah. know that this market is still a good market. Either and, on either side, seller and buyer, uh -huh. you know, it, 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 and I want to be careful here. I think a lot of buyers think, oh, I'm not, I'm getting the short end of the stick because I didn't get the fridge. And, and that is not the main objective of this, folks, is not to get the fridge. Um, you can't live in a fridge. Yeah. And so that is not the main objective of this thing. And a good example of this is we could have, I liked it at the beginning, and I guess what that could be kind of our closing, is people are waiting for the market to change. And I would argue more often than not, that change is not going to work in your favor. In fact, it's to work. If you bought a house before COVID, what is that house worth now? A hundred grand more on average than it was you know, in 2019. Okay. Um, so what? Um, maybe you've had a two or three percent um, decline from last month. You're still pocketing how much tax free income as a seller. And as a buyer, you pointed it out. Um, you're, if you're renting right now, you're living somewhere. If you're renting right now, that doesn't look good. No. No, and, I, you know, talking to people last year who said the market's too crazy, I'm going to wait for prices to come down. We're sitting here a year later and prices have not come down. You know, um, you know. But interest rates have gone up, so their buying power has come down. It has come down. Um, so, you know, if you're on the fence about it, have a conversation with Bill. Have a conversation with me because... I can tell you so many of the people who said they were going to wait are now coming back to me and going, I really do need to buy because I'm going to be priced out of the market next year. And they probably will if they don't do what they can do to get into it now. So how can they have that conversation with you? How's the best way to get a hold of you? Absolutely. It's super easy. You can give me a call or shoot me a text 254-624-4307. And I'm sure it's going to pop up somewhere magically. <laughs> How about you, Bill? How do they get a hold of you and your you team? You know, they can reach out to me at 254-495-5661. And don't forget to subscribe. Um, also hit that little bell looking thing they have there um, and like this video. Also, uh, if you have comments or questions, please uh, post that on there. And next, uh, next time we have Samantha on here, Samantha will uh, come on and we'll get back to more lending technical stuff um, instead of a pet. We're calling this the real estate pep talk because when you know let's get let's let's get our head right in the game and let's go out there and get your real estate goals met. What do you say, awesome. Samantha? Thanks, Bill. Have a great Bye day. Bye now. See ya.